I am Dr. Guy Mitchell. Uh, um, uh, I am a uh, GP and uh, I also work in various other clinics, skin clinics and race course work. And I work for Harlequins Rugby Club as well. Amazing. Oh, and I'm a jockey. <laughs> Which is which is so cool. <laughs> so so cool. So when you were growing up, did you have a dream or a goal, or was it what you've ended up doing, or was it something totally different? Um, so yes, growing up, my dream was to be a jockey, uh, a, probably a jump jockey, to be honest. And um, I always used to want to do that, and I used to. Uh, to the point that I had a, a group of friends who also wanted to do it. We used to run around the garden with hats and silks and things on, even with the goggles down, jumping over jumps, pretending to be jump jockeys, like a crazy wow. bunch of people. Um, <laughs> and um, and then, of course, I started riding at a young age as well. Uh, and I grew up in a, in, a, in a racing yard. So my dad was a trainer. Um, oh, wow. That's amazing. That is amazing. So did you like go and support him and watch it from little? Yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, I was involved um, in the yard and, um, you know, I, I wasn't riding the racehorses when I was really little. I was had my own pony. I used to follow them up behind on the tracks and things. Uh, and then I would go to the races with my dad often um, yeah. and, and see all that side of it as well. My gosh, amazing. So you rode from a really young age and you really wanted to do that from a from a young age. When is it kind of like come into fruition? Did it come into fruition a little bit later on in life or? Um, well, to become a jockey, you you can be, um, get a license from the age of 16 and most okay. jockeys will get um, a license called an amateur license. So it's okay. it's obviously a, a stepping stone to becoming a, a professional. Uh, yeah. And many of the top jockeys who are now, you know, have been champion jockey and things like Ryan Moore on the yeah. flat and um, Richard Johnson, who's a champion jump jockey, they all yeah. started that route as well. Um, and a bit like me, they would have gone through um, riding in the in the pony club. So doing eventing and show jumping and all those and dressage, which is, uh, you know, a really important component of riding because it's it's I, I call it proper riding, um, but it's not as much fun as going flat out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you like that adrenaline then that like speed? Go for it. Yeah. 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 And jumping, jumping. But, you know, I I'm, I'm so lucky to have my license to race now but uh, I do have a license to jump but it's probably not a good idea because it's far more risky yeah 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 definitely well I've I started riding um, about a year and a half ago maybe um it was something that a friend wanted to do she came down from London and, and wanted to um, ride a horse and I said uh no <laughs> she was like please she was like we don't have anything like that in London please I really want to I really want to do it and I was like oh begrudgingly I was like okay fine I've got friends who've got horses and I was like I know there's like a stables where where they they go and run up we'll we'll go and guy honestly the first time I was terrified I I literally I kept saying to the woman who was teaching us I feel like I'm on a camel <laughs> to which she responded she was like have you ever been on a camel I was like no I just should imagine this is what it feels like it was just the motion and everything I thought this is just horrendous this is not for me but my friend loved it and we went out and the woman actually said to me You're quite naturally good at this Jen which was hilarious because I was like oh, I don't want to be here <laughs> and yeah kind of flash the next couple of weeks I remember saying to my family I'm going to give it a go again I feel like I should give it a go again I wasn't as open-minded as I should have been um, and yeah, there was no stopping me after that. I absolutely loved it. And um, yeah, I think it's like a really good outlet um, for, you know, stress and stuff. Like I've got my own company and it's it's very stressful, um, mm -hmm. although I love it. It's very stressful. And I feel like it's a very good, um, yeah, very good stress relief. It's a very good outlet for, for things like that. And you just find a connection that you can't get with people. So, yeah, I I love it. I love it. What What is your favourite part about it? What is the the biggest pull for you? Um, 
I mean, I love the horses, I think, you know, um, obviously there's lots of facets to horse racing. Uh, it's a huge industry and betting is a big part of that because it raises a lot of revenue. But for me, it's always been the horses. Um, and and obviously I love riding. And yeah, like you say, I am a bit of an adrenaline crazy person and I like going fast. Um, <laughs> and, you know, that's been from a young age as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so can you remember your first competition then? Uh, yeah, I can. It, um, it was at a, a place which no longer exists, unfortunately, because the M25 has kind of taken oh. over. Oh, <laughs> um, no. It was a place in uh, near home called um, Downsway, which was a cross country course. And I think I was six or seven. And I had a pony then who was a grey pony called um, Sasha. And we went round this little sort of cross country course, which wasn't particularly big, but it was it was brilliant and it was fun. Yeah. And uh, and that was the sort of beginning of competitive riding. Yeah. Um, and that led to lots of other other things and lots of ponies and then on to bigger you know, horses yeah. uh, and on from there. Amazing. So you say that your day job, you're a doctor. How mm. does that compare then? to horse riding I mean that's like for me like in my head that's like worlds apart but is this similarities like um well like I say my, my I have what you would describe as a portfolio career so part of my job is being a GP um part of my job is working in skin clinic and I do um operations on skin cancers and things like that uh, and then I'm lucky enough to work on racetracks as the jockey's doctor so if they fall off, we pick them up. Um, so there's lots of different facets. But, you know, I, I think um, certainly being a GP is is quite a stressful job. So riding for me is my uh, release. And uh, and also for, to be a jockey, you have to be incredibly fit. So I do a lot of training and sport. And that also keeps me uh, mentally fit as well uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. deals with the stress that my job generates. Um, yeah which I find incredibly helpful. Absolutely. It's that like work life balance, isn't it? Trying to get it right. Have you had any nasty falls? Oh, yeah, lots. Yeah, um, mostly on the ponies. Um, yeah. I think the worst one was uh, when I was we so we used to do this thing called mock hunting. So there was no fox. There was someone pretending to be the fox. Um, and the horse flipped over with me and broke my shoulder blade. So that was pretty bad. Yeah, so um, I hit a jump and it, it was going quite fast. And it, so the horse somersaulted and I got thrown out of the saddle, but not far enough away that its back legs didn't come over and land on me. Oh, <laughs> um, gosh. And luckily it was in a ploughed field, so the landing was actually quite soft, except then the horse's back legs landed on top of me. Um, oh, but my mum just made me get back on and carry on riding. So um, <laughs> that's that's what it was like being a kid in the 80s. <laughs> just like tough, get back on, you're fine. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with you. Get on with it. Yeah, shrug it off. You, you're all good. You're all good. Oh, and my gosh. That sounds painful. Factor is uh, quite a big deal. It takes an awful lot of fall. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> that's my mum. I love it. So, Stop what are your, what are your fondest memories then of of riding? Are they um, early memories or are they current memories? Um, I, I probably a whole host of things. I mean, obviously, um, I have fond memories from growing up as a kid because of all the friends that I had and the nice, nice ponies we were lucky to have. Um, but I think that, you know, the top memory has got to be riding a winner at Goodwood a couple of weeks ago. Um, nothing really beats that. Oh my gosh. Amazing. What was that feeling like? Was that like, because obviously you dream about these things, don't you? You know, they're, they're always the goals that you have in mind because even though people say, oh, don't set your goals that high, but you have to because there has to be some sort of achievement. And it has to be, you we have to be working towards something. So yeah. what was the expectation versus the reality of it? 
So, I mean, I've, you know, I've always wanted to ride as, a, as an amateur jockey. So I was lucky to get my license uh, a year or so ago. Um, and it's really variable because there are some jockeys who get their license and the first horse they ride, they win on, um, probably unexpectedly. And uh, you can think of top jockeys like I think Pat Edry, for example, he had, he had 100 rides before he rode a winner, but then went on to be one of the best jockeys there ever was. Um, so my expectations or hopes were that I would ride a winner at some point. Um, and the, the really good thing about the win at Goodwood was it was at Goodwood, which is one of the tracks I, I work at. Um, it's a, it's my, our local track as well, to, close to where we live. Um, the horse was bought specifically for me to ride in races by my friends. Um, a group of my friends got together and bought the horse, including my wife. Um, and then the horse is actually trained by uh, a great friend of mine who I've known pretty much all my life. Um, so there's all these little threads leading up to that. Um, and to be honest, we didn't we didn't really expect him to win. Um, we, whenever you get on a horse in a race, you do obviously want to do as, as well as you can. Uh, and actually, that's the rules as well. If you don't do as best you can, you get hauled up in front of the um, stewards. But I thought I might finish third or fourth or something like that. So when it came to to winning, it was um, it was so unexpected. So my first emotion was a disbelief. Actually, is it, am I? I have to pinch myself yeah. uh, when I went over the line because I didn't think it was possible. Uh, uh, luckily, it was it was actually reality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and how lovely that all of those components um you know made up that moment how like how special I mean I'm sure it would have been special whether you regardless of that but you know that that's e you know even more special isn't it because of all those little components oh ab absolutely uh, and and the, the horse we own he's he's so lovely um and you know he's a superstar and we we love him to bits as even even if he hadn't won um but He's gone on one and on a on a day like that, you know, the, yeah. the biggest downer was that it wasn't open to the public. So yeah, it was very there was very um so it wasn't like a proper proper um you know post race big crowd and things. But to be honest, that's not the important thing. The important thing is that we we won. Yeah, uh, regardless definitely. of who was there. <laughs> definitely. So, so talk us through, like, for people who don't know, do you now go on to do something else? Is it is it like a, a a league? Is it like you know, do you move on elsewhere, or do you just keep training and and entering other races? Yeah. So, um, as an amateur jockey, there's a, a whole schedule of races throughout the year, um, and uh, there's a mixture of turf races so racing on the grass and racing on all weather tracks and they're they're usually in the winter because obviously in the winter it's either too wet or the ground's frozen so you then go on to surfaces which are sort of sand or what they call fiber um and and it continues um on from there so actually there is a a, a championship so there's a men's and a ladies championship and uh, it's I think it's from the 1st of January to the 31st of December. Um, I'm, I don't really know what's going to happen this year, though, uh, mm -hmm. because, of course, it was cancelled for most of it. Um, yeah. But that's then they schedule races. I mean, there's one um, on Monday. There was one this week on uh, Monday gone yeah. and they're all over the country. So um, some are in Scotland, some are up north, some are down here so Goodwood where I rode hosts um two a year okay uh, and the next race is at Windsor so not not far at just outside London um and it's it's quite difficult I've, I'm obviously keen to keep riding and things but the horse that we have is um horses have specific distances that they run over uh okay. you know it's a bit like athletics yeah. Some people are sprinters and some people are middle distance and some people are longer distance. And ours is a middle distance runner, if you like, um, which means his ideal distance is just over a mile, about a mile and uh, a quarter, something like that. Um, 
and these other amateur races that they schedule are all sorts of different distances so the one on monday is a bit like the equivalent of 200 meters in athletics so it's a six furlong race and that's a, a sprint basically yeah. um and it's lots of trainers have amateur jockeys riding for them on a regular basis um so for instance when my father was uh riding as an amateur jockey um a lot of them were had proper jobs as well so they were really proper amateurs uh my dad wasn't he he was working and living in a racing yard so he was almost uh you know i say cheating he wasn't really cheating but you know he was riding every day uh, and it's a bit like me now i don't ride every day whereas yeah. lots of people i compete against are riding every day and also yeah. they work in racing and therefore they get more rides because they work for certain yards that run more horses in those races so that's my rate limiting step if you like um yeah. and hopefully by doing stuff like this um amazingly people have wanted to talk to me on the radio and things as well um and that might just put me out there a bit and people might go actually yeah we'll we'll put that jockey up or or something like that fingers crossed that's what happens yeah definitely yeah. definitely is that what you'd love to do would you love to do it full time oh i'm, ne I'm never gonna do it uh full time because um as an amateur you're not allowed to make any money from it uh and you're also not allowed to bet on yourself so there's no avenue to really make money you do get you know i got a nice um I got a prize. I got a decanter, a really nice decanter wow. for winning, crystal decanter. Wow. I, it's still in the box, um, <laughs> but um, you get stuff like that, but you don't get money. So it wouldn't be a financially viable choice for me anyway. Um, and I'm, you know, I'll hold my hand up. I'm probably not good enough to become professional. I'm too heavy to be a flat jockey because they're much lighter than the professional flat jockeys, and. I couldn't become a jump jockey now at my age. Um, you know, they're all retiring way before, um, mostly because they've broken every bone in their body kind of thing. So it's um, it's not a great idea if you've got another job. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> You'll be in no. plaster the whole time. Yeah, yeah. And as a doctor, I'm sure they'd be looking at you like, mm. <laughs> Yeah, I th and also I think that would, um, it would upset my fellow um, doctor colleagues. <laughs> Uh, where's Guy on Monday morning? Oh, he's in hospital again. OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. So um, if you could do um, uh, an alternate career, so obviously your career is you are a GP. What do you think you would have chosen? Would you have chosen riding or is there another thing that you love that you might have liked to have pursued? Um, I think I think realistically, I would probably have wanted to be involved in racing as a as a trainer or something like that. But, you know, that's a boring answer. I, I would I would rather have been something. I definitely want to do something outdoors. So I think something like an adventurer or, uh, you know, a mountaineer like um, Chris Bonington or Sir, yeah. Sir Fines or something, maybe not that extreme, um, something like that. Or I quite like to have been in the Marines, some, you know, okay. follow that kind of thing. Yeah, um, maybe like a Bear grills. Yeah, I, I'm not sure how I, uh, yeah. Yes, maybe, but not like him though, because I'm not, I wouldn't like being on TV No. so much. Yeah, no, no, but the whole outdoors kind of like yeah. survival thing. Yeah, yeah, I quite Amazing. like that. So do you have a bucket list of things that you want to tick off? Yes, um, I think I've got two bucket lists. One is a fantasy and one is a reality. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the fantasy bucket list really involves riding in the Grand National, which is obviously completely ludicrous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the realistic one is more about um, really doing stuff with my wife and kids and friends. So travel. Um, yeah. I, I'd like to go to places like... Um, Vietnam and Cambodia and 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 that kind of thing. Um, food, I love food. Going so experiencing that kind of thing, and we we like to go skiing. So that's that's my sort of carry on doing that kind of thing. Um, but anything really that involves them. The only other, the only selfish thing I'd quite like to do because it wouldn't involve them is go on a Lions tour. Okay. You know the rugby. Yeah. Um, wherever rugby. that may be. Yeah. 
Okay, awesome. So you like sport then? I'm getting like a really sporty vibe. I love sport, yeah. But well, most sport, but um, rugby and racing and uh, yeah, I guess I quite like cycling and things, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, mostly outdoors. You're very outdoorsy. That's right. <laughs> So my next question was, what are your hobbies? I'm guessing, do you have any like indoor? Do you like, you know, being indoors? And are you a cook? Do you like cooking? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm OK at cooking. Um, <laughs> I'm quite good at making soups. OK. Um, and uh, my kids like pasta bake. I make a good pasta bake, which is a, a bit of a staple. Yeah. It's a bit of a winter staple. It's not so good in the summer. Um, uh, hobbies uh, life's a bit too busy for that I mean my hobby is riding um yeah. which is why I'm in the amateur status and, and keeping fit so whether yeah. that's uh running cycling and again with friends usually mountain biking uh gym I don't go to the um, we just I just do it in the garage yeah yeah Perfect. because it has to fit in around everything else I haven't got the time to actually go to a gym although obviously they're not open at the moment I don't think anyway but yeah yeah. Um, so you said that you were a foodie if you could pick your favorite three course meals what would you have anything in the world oh um that's a really difficult question um hmm, probably I, the, the politically correct question is anything cooked by my wife uh, <laughs> <laughs> um which is true because she's an incredible cook. Um, but starter wise, um, I quite like ceviche, you know, fish and uh, probably a really good steak. And being a jockey, you tend not to be a pudding person. Um, okay. I'm a bit straightforward. I quite like salted caramel ice cream as a that's my, you know, that's, that's my okay. sin food. I'm not really allowed to eat stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. At the okay. moment, at the moment. Yeah, so um, you just have like a treat. That would be your treat. That would be a real treat, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, two scoops would be a big treat. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have two scoops when you won? Um, I can't even remember because, well, you can imagine what we were like. Yeah, I can. I can. Yeah, yeah. Elation. Yeah, I am. Um, I, um... I remember that morning and uh, I went into in our in our um, sort of utility room. We've got a little drinks fridge and I, I wasn't actually going to the drinks fridge. I haven't got a bad alcohol problem or anything at that time in the morning. But um, I, I must have been putting a wash on or something because it's above the washing machine. And I looked in and I saw, mm, why are the why is there champagne in the drinks fridge? You know, it's, this, that's that's bad karma. And my wife had obviously put them there um and so well she was right and, and so yeah. they disappeared and then she appeared from somewhere with a magnum of champagne and I don't know where she'd been hiding that <laughs> That's um, brilliant. and it was cold so I don't even she must have had it in the neighbor's fridge or something I've no idea what she did she must have it's almost like she knew well I wish she had properly known because she would have put more money on it because <laughs> it was 50 <laughs> to 1 was it yeah yeah oh. Gosh. And she did a sort of two pound fifty each way. <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad return, but you know, she could have pushed the boat. If she'd spent the same money on the bet as she had on a magnum of champagne. I was literally just going to say that. You know, <laughs> oh, but wow. it was nice champagne, so it was a good treat. Exactly, absolutely. So, what's kept you busy during lockdown? Have you still ridden, and have you still been working? Um, so nothing really changed for me during lockdown because I was just working flat out, uh, obviously, as, as a GP. Uh, what did change work wise was that the racing stopped and the rugby stopped. Um, and for a period, um, I wasn't able to go and ride either. Okay. Um, so but but work was really busy, is still really busy uh, in GP land. Um, so. It, the only difference it made to me was on the days that I don't work, because I work part time, I only work three days. Um, I found myself with some free time, so I was able to 
take the dogs out and do stuff around the house and spend more time um, with everyone at home. Yeah, yeah. So I bet that was a nice bit of relief for you. Yeah, it, it, it was. But I'm, you know, I'm one of those people that has to be doing something. So I always find something to do. Yeah. Whether definitely. it's painting a windowsill or <laughs> stopping logs or something. Um, yeah. That said, you know, I don't mind going to the pub and sitting in front of the fire occasionally and that kind of thing but um yeah no we were flat out during lockdown anyway so yeah yeah it was it was what it was <laughs> yeah so you say that you've got a family do they ride did you encourage the, the children to ride have they taken like an interest or a passion in it or is it just not their thing um I think when they were younger they they wanted to give it a go and so they just used to go to a little riding stables near where we lived but you know, putting it in context, I grew up in a yard, in a racing yard, and my pony just happened to be in one of the empty stables. Um, yeah. And obviously there's no rent or anything attached to that. And my, my wife grew up on a farm, her, her parents farmed, okay. and well, her brother now runs the farm. And so her horses and things were kept on the farm. Be able to afford to have a house and a garden and the land big enough to maintain horses is, well, certainly here where we live is ridiculously expensive. Um, so it never really came to fruition, awfully time consuming. And, you know, if you had them, it would end up being me or my wife doing it. And we simply couldn't manage that with yeah. full time jobs because we were both working full time then as well. And, yeah. and my wife said was an is an anaesthetist. So she was doing on calls and, wow. you know, all that stuff. So having horses and ponies would have been beautiful. And, you know, yeah. if I if I won the lottery um, tomorrow, wherever it is, uh, yeah. and we. I would buy a house that had land and they could have some horses. I'd be very happy Yeah. because I wouldn't be working and I'd be able to look after the horses for them. Of course. Um, but, they, you know, they love hockey and they're really good at netball and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's a big priority, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why it's so good doing what I do, because I'm very lucky I ride for a local trainer in Chiddingfold. Um, and of course, I pitch up and ride. I don't have to do you know I, I have to brush the horses after I've ridden them and make sure they're comfortable and put their rugs on and all that kind of stuff but I don't have to do all the mucking out and all the hard yards um you know it's it's brilliant actually I love it yeah yeah, yeah definitely yeah. <laughs> so my last question for you is what's next for you in the world of riding where do you hope to be where do you hope to go what do you hope to do um so I think the the primary aim is to get more rides um for other people on other horses and and gain more experience um you know i'm i'm mindful that i'm a, a novice amateur jockey although i've ridden all my life um i want to get better i want to be better um i'm really determined to do that to ride more winners uh in terms of racing um certainly for our horse he's i think he's going to be racing on the 24th um at newbury so i should be riding him there um and then we have a plan for him going through to the end of the year so there's a there's another race in i think november at kempton park and then there's a race at um wolverhampton that'll be okay. under floodlights so that'll be on a synthetic track not on turf that'll be that'll very be glamorous cool. up at wolverhampton you can imagine yeah. in, the, in december that'll be really nice um <laughs> freezing. i know um so <laughs> Um, and then uh, we, because of the group of people that own him, there's actually about 30 people. And because of COVID that we haven't been able to get together. So everyone's desperate to meet up and have some fun. Um, and there's a plan afoot to take the horse to the south of France to a racetrack called cannes sur which is near Nice. And they have a um, they have a winter racing carnival, which is, I think, about six weeks long. Uh, and and my my friend who's the trainer he often takes three or four horses and they they effectively move down there for that period of time and they might race two or three times so our aim would be for our horse to go and to race a couple of times and hopefully one at least one of those races will be in an amateur race and i'll go down and ride him and at the moment the rules in uh, the french race courses are i think you can have up to a thousand people watching so our quite a few of the people who are in the 30 of the owners are in America and Australia and stuff like that so it won't be all of them but probably 
20 or so of them might be able to go and actually watch and have a weekend in the south of France. So that could be a lot of fun, but I think the south of France won't know what's hit it because they like partying a lot. <laughs> Amazing. That sounds absolutely incredible. Oh, yeah. What a, what a great thing to be able to do. Because like you say, you've, you've kind of missed out on that celebration, haven't you? Oh, absolutely. Um, so they, they would be, um, we floated the idea with them uh, last week and they loved it. They absolutely loved yeah. it. Um, and then if he goes there, hopefully he, you know, he could win. The, the prize money in France is much better as well. So if he, if he places or wins, he'll probably pay for his trip just in that one race. So that's wow. always useful. Yeah, um, definitely. And then we'll go back into the season next year. He'll probably have a bit of a break after that. Um, yeah. And our big aim for next year is the amateur derby at Epsom. So it's just, it's on the same track as the proper derby. Yeah. So that's Incredible. what we're aiming for. Oh, gosh, that would be absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Well, I wish you all the very best of luck for it. Thank you. No worries Thank at all. No much. worries at all. And it's been amazing to chat to you. Thank you so much for taking the time, because I know, unlike lots of other people that I've spoken to, um, that you're actually very busy. <laughs> Thank you. It's been a pleasure. No worries at all. I'll send you the link when it goes up on the channel. I'd love to stay in touch and, and hear about how well you're doing and everything. Brilliant. Thank you. Amazing. Well, you okay. take care. Best Thank wishes. Bye. Nice to meet you. Bye. Bye. Guest number 70. What? Crazy. I'm sorry, but that was very cool. Anyone else think that was cool? Now, I know a lot of my guests are in the creative arts industry, but that, I'm sorry, that is an art in itself, being able to sit on the horse. Trust me, I know. <laughs> but being able to do what he does as fast as he does, insane. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you so much, Guy. So lots more guests still to come. Wrap up warm, get a blankie and a hot chocolate and join me next week for another guest. Take care, everyone. See you soon.